Greetings. Here we are again. I'm Mark. I love coding. And where we left off was uh, in our uh, random audio player. We've added two buttons to it. In this video tutorial, we are going to add two more buttons. And we might as well just jump right into it. Um, first thing we want to do is add those buttons within our initialization function. Um, and so how are we going to do that? Well, pretty simplistic. We're going to add buttons almost identical to what we did here. Um, and let's see how it works out. Um, I want to add a specific type of a button uh, as well. We've done image, we've done rectangles. I want to do a circle as well um, using the built-in geometry uh, that came with processing four. And again, if you uh, don't have a version already of this sketch, you can download it from the link below from my GitHub account. Um, and again, one of the first things we want to do before we do this is save it, file, save as, and we're going to call this one uh, button 5B um, part 5B uh, B uh, uh, I'll be two. All right. And so, what do we want to add? We want to add a pause button, a repeat button, and a exit button. So, what I'm going to do here is make it quick and simple. I'm going to. Um, what am I going to do? Okay, first I'm going to copy this guy. And copy it and paste it we're gonna use an image for this one we're gonna call it button 3 oh yeah since we're adding these extra buttons which is gonna equal 5 buttons we're gonna change our little index there to 5 so we're adding button 3 and what is this button gonna say it's gonna be our pause button uh, P-A-U-S-E our pause button and um, we need uh, the uh, size of this button, the location of this button, and pretty much everything we needed in all the other ones. Um, and so we're going to change a couple of things. Um, we want this to be, we're going to divide this by two. We want to put dead center in the screen. And same location. Now size is going to be, um, we're going to make it the same size as the uh, next button. And so we're going to change this to 8 and this one to 12. And the color. Um, of this button. What is it? We want this button to be. Um, we want this button to be. Ooh, uh, let's see. We're going to change this to a little bit of red. Um, we want this to be um, zero green and a little bit of, uh, or let's say a lot of blue um, to. Five, five. And if you don't know, up here in tools, there's a color selector um, that you can use in processing. Um, but I found it a little bit difficult uh, to kind of get exactly the way I want it. Um, and so I wrote one. Let's see, where is that? I call it color picker. And I've got buttons and sliders. We are going to actually do this later on. I want to show you sliders later on. Um, and so I want this to be RGB. And what colors did we choose on this? We said it was 100. 
dial that to 100 or as close to it as we can and we want this to be zero and we want this to be and so that button is going to be roughly around that color purple um, and then let's change it to second color secondary color will be let's say green 200 let's see what happens when we move this to 200 and these to zero we get a greeny kind of thing going on um, is that the way we want it mm, yeah, let's see. so what do we got here now we didn't do this gonna do this gonna do this and we just gonna get a blue okay so it's gonna go from purple to blue on that button and the next button we kind of want to um, do a little something different here let's just paste this next thing here um, same thing we had before paste only this time it's going to be button ooh, this should be button number two even though it's the third button this should be number three and we want it to be um, a circle a circle button this is this button is going to be our uh, do we want to repeat um, oh yeah and this is a, a a latch type button first I forgot to change that up here it's a latch type button is a latch or pause is a latch true and same with repeat it's a latch and we want to see give it the name um, we're going to say off for now because repeat is not on and the size that we're dealing with the space that is available within the circle we're creating we can't really put much more in there than off or on um, and so now we want to uh, decide our row location we want it further over from where it was at um, eight. let's see what's a good arbitrary number well not arbitrary you know it's gonna be somewhere between uh, um, how about divided by 2.5 so in this case we can use this little function that converts it to an integer um, we'll see if it, we like it we, if we don't like it we'll change it just like it, everything else right um, and then this is going to be the size of our circle um, and the circle is an ellipse with equal sides <laughs> to get what we're looking for we're gonna have to do the same thing to make sure they're exact let's just do it this way um, let's just copy this And then what's what's our primary colors and secondary colors um, well for repeat um, being off we'll make it red that makes sense to me right 255 zero and then for on we'll make it a little under the green side 200 and so yeah if we turn this down and it's up to here to about 200 yeah it's going to be like about like that and then the red is going to look like this nice bright red okay um and i think that's it for this button and then our last button which is our exit button um let's paste another one oops our exit button let's uh let me use a rectangle oops control copy control v 
paste and we're going to use a rectangle and we're going to say exit EXIT and we're going to be further down so uh, 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 uh. oh wait no um oh my 1.5 and this can be let's do something like this how about this um, change this one to times point seven five and this one here times space times point eight five and is it airing out yes and so we're gonna do the same thing here INT int turn it into an integer right when we do the calculation and that should be that um, that gives us these buttons now right now they aren't doing anything but that's okay let's uh, go over here in our loop it already knows that there's five of them let's just kind of see if we get an error we who knows we might or we might not here we go um, first want to save it control s hit play click on it click on that click on this and we got an error again our classic null point exception error what did we do wrong Oh, over in a knit. Let me see. Buttons. There's five buttons. Oh, jeez. Silly boy. Okay, now we should get it. We should have it. And showing you all our little buttons here. Oh, this one's not right. And so that's okay. We're not there yet. And this exit. It's not right either. And this one's not working, but we still got music playing. Okay. An exit button. Let's see, we gotta make the color. Um, I'm gonna make this almost, we're gonna make a darker red and zero zero and then we're gonna make this like uh, orange or something orange okay let's see what that looks like oh, over here orange RGB 200 And then all the way down, yeah, and no, kind of gold, okay. I, I, I like that. And we're getting there. Um, I kind of don't like the size of that. And so I'm going to make this smaller. Um, dividing by a larger number. Ten. Let's see what it looks like now. Control save select a little better but yeah all right let's continue now we want to do a button check right and we got the buttons we know that it will select the buttons and 
but for all we know, like here, when we click on on off, nothing's happening. We haven't set up to do that. We got exit changing its color. We got pause changing its color. Um, let's exit out of this and continue. So what's next? Well, the next thing is to check, check, check the button. Um, check what's been clicked. Uh, but wait, wait, wait. Before we do that, let's go ahead and get that other button displaying. Um, so uh, let me see. Where are we at? We're right here. Buttons. Um, display. And we've like checked for image. We checked for rectangle. Now the next thing would be circle. And so let's just copy this and see how much of it we can reuse. Copy this, paste, and we want it to spell C-I-R-L-C-E. Wait, no. See, that kind of spelling will get you an error that you can't fix. It won't tell you that you got a misspelled uh, string. Okay, so circle. Now, what happens under the case of the circle? Well, we, uh, let me see. Hmm. Well, I guess we uh, want to keep the stroke weight. We want to change the stroke color um, to, like, white. Um, and then we want to... We want to fill it. Then we want to create an ellipse... ellipse and let me see it's got a location and it's got a size and that's pretty much it and then uh, now if you remember up here and we did pass the index from back over in this for loop right here. We pass the index on over. And now we're going to use it. Um, let me see if we can get this right. Let me see if underscore i equals one text loop list and this is particular to the one button Position button next and we're gonna times that by point 
because um, you don't want it right on the button and at button Y and that's where we want this located uh, and then um, Now this is where we check <laughs> to make sure that here, yep, you see I didn't spell it right here. Then you probably saw that and you were like, no, yeah, okay. Now let's see what happens. And I didn't save it, but what the heck. Yeah, there's our deal and, and it changes the color, but no, I don't like that. No. <laughs> And so let's fix that. And that would be over here. Um, and that would be, we just want to do a fill real quick right here. And we're going to use grayscale 255. And that should take care of that. Let's see if that is now correct the way we want it. And it's white, yeah, and it's staying white, and the button is changing. Okay, but on off is not changing yet, but we're getting there. Now we're going to do um, checking our button. And checking the button is uh, pretty much the last thing we've got to do for this thing. And we're going to just continue on with what we did here with our cases. And so here's the switch, here's the case. Now this case here, case one, it ended up right here. And what we wanna do is break out of it in that instance or more or less in that situation or case and go to case number two, which is also the uh, index of our button so it's actually saying case two but it is button three in fact which button three is our uh, pause a button if it's case number two if it is pause in fact as we pushed if uh, the now playing now playing now playing is not equal to more or less null that means there's something there right um, what we want to do is uh, pause the song oops song dot p a U S E pause and um, we want to say that paused E A U S E D equals true. It's another one of our switches, kind of like our a Boolean function. Now set of pause equals to true. Um, in order to do that, we need to check up here and go back over here and where would this be put at um, it's a boolean let's put it in here paused create our boolean our button check paused equals two um, or true paused equals true we pause the song we want to say that it's paused we want to change the label so we're gonna do uh, but 
underscore I dot label equals P L A Y equals play. Oops, I want the label to say play equals play. If it's now playing has a label, a song name, then it does this. If it does not, um, so we'll make an else, else, and we want to song dot p l a y play the song, right? And in which case we're playing the song, so paused should equal false if A L S E and we're gonna switch our label back again. Let's just copy this. Paste it label to be P A U S E pause. And let me see, is that going to be roughly it for that button? Um, but when we're pausing, we have to remember a couple of things about the pause. One of the things is um, when we hit the play button, when we play next song, if it's uh, paused or if it is paused we want to change some things and so it's playing the song right um, we said the song started right but we want to because up uh, you click next song we do not want it be in pause mode and so P A U S D paused equals F A L S E false and we want to basically uh, we probably could have just copied all this we're gonna copy this as well control C to copy it and I'm changing the label name paste and in this situation it's gonna be of number two it's not gonna be the same so we're just gonna hard code it to number two. Let's see, control save if anything's broken yet. Something not right here. And so let's see where we're at. Break. All right. Now we have this situation. If this, then this. I see what I did. Okay. I've got to encase this, encapsulate this. If song dot is playing, if the song is playing. Then do all this. But these conditions don't exist. Okay, so let's go over this. Here. So what's going on here is condition number two. That means you've hit the pause button. If the song um, does not equal null, then do the rest of this. If it does, just pass by it. If the song is playing, do this. If it's not, if it's it, or, if the song is playing, pause it. Else, if it's not playing, start playing it. 
So in looking at it, one of the things I did not do is right here, when it's at the very beginning and you're clicking your first select, the select button, we need to um, set the paused button also equal to false. Things we need to check here is if the song, is, if it, 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 if it's been selected, the list has been selected and it's started, and if it's started and the song is not playing, and we want to add this, and song is not paused not P A U S E D if it's not paused then start the song let me see We have our pause working. Next song, unpause it and starts the next song. Next song, next song, next song. Last song. Boom. Start again. Okay. The next uh, thing we want to do. Um, we want to, well, we don't need this anymore. Let's get rid of that. We want to um, have a repeat button. A repeat button. And so if we click the repeat button, it's going to um, start the same list all over again randomly. And so let's let's do that. Um, again, that's another check button, and again, um, that is going to be um, right after this, I guess. Right after this, we have to actually break, again, break out of our switch statement, because that condition has been satisfied and completed. And the next condition would be or the next case in case is going to be button three which is our repeat button okay this is going to be our uh, repeat button and this button when it's pushed it latches on it says yes we're going to repeat and as long as it's in that state it will repeat that list when it's complete and so let's get on with it again we're going to need another boolean um a boolean and that boolean is going to be just call it repeat okay now in our button check we want to make basically when you push that repeat button what happens is uh, if it's been pushed we want it to turn false if it hasn't been pushed we want it to turn true and so to do that we do what we've done in the past repeat equals not repeat now this is a weird statement it's a shortcut statement but and if you try to think it through it can kind of twist your brain a bit which is done to mine we're gonna do the uh, but and we're gonna bring in that variable uh, index variable 
and we're gonna say label let me type in L label but label equals we're just gonna say this oops off and then we're gonna do this if repeat means is repeat true if it's true right we if repeat is true we want to uh, say that it's on And so we're basically going to take this right here, copy it, paste it, lay on. And so that's more or less the end of that um, before we do anything with it. Let's just test to see if that it does that state does exist. We're gonna control S save it. Hit play, select, select our list. Okay, well, let's just mess with this. Loop on, loop off, loop on, loop off. It's working good. Okay, now where do we deal with this? Good question. Um, at that point in time we need to check to see if it's actually being used. Where, where are we gonna check that? Well, we're gonna check it when the end of the list is done playing, which we check, test over here. If it's gotten to the length, if uh, it's completed, um, then we're gonna do this right here. Um, right in here, we're going to say if this is kind of important, if not repeat, if repeat equals false, right? If repeat equals false, we want it to do this, and that's pretty much it. Let's see if this is going to work for us. Um, oops. If repeat equals false, do this. This statement here, what, um, fix this here. What this does is it resets the whole thing. We don't want to do that. Because um, what it essentially does is it resets our repeat button, which we don't need it to do. And in fact, none of this is necessary. So if we run this now, we still got one issue we have to figure out. But let's run it and see where we're at here. Um, we select it. Oop, wrong list. I want that list. We... Uh, Hit next, hit loop. It seems to be working. some aesthetic things I want to do. Um, one of the first things I want to do is um, this. I want to say I want to change this to um, separate line. Separate line. So we want to use 
that and that and I'm going to delete that so when we run it now save it run it you can see those two separate lines I like that a lot better um, exit that and let me see um, also when we're playing it I kind of don't like open it how far away this loop list is from this loop list button um, and so what I want to do is change that just a little bit um, and that in display yeah loop list I have it set for this multiply it by that let's multiply it by 9 Nine zero or point nine. Let's uh, save it and run it and see what we get here. Um, too far over. Okay, so we're gonna go back to it was point eight seven. Let's put eight. Eight. Let's see what happens. I like it better. It's hard to tell, but I like it. Okay, our last button. Our last button. It's the exit button. It's not necessary, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, it was one of the things I want to show you uh, about the buttons. And let's go over here and initialize. Um, no, let's not do that. Let's go into button display. Now, when we're displaying the buttons, the rectangle button. Let's change this real quick. Um, we want to change this to... Um, okay, you have a, a rectangle, right? And you have a location, X and Y. And then we have a size, the width and height. But if you add a third size which basically what this will do is it will round the edges to whatever number you put here and I will show you what that looks like in just a second um, H we're gonna round it equal to that uh, to the actual height and so if you look at that now let's save it you can see that the button is rounded. Corners are rounded instead of square. Okay, we still got the action going on here. We've got the action going on there. We can start a new one, cancel it, exit out of it. Okay, the next button. We want to add, um, I think, did we already do that? Let me see. Um, we've got our exit button. We've already added it. All we got to do now is to do a button check with it and get more or less get it functional. And so how do we do that? Okay, that would be, we're at the third case. Well, now we got to do um, our fourth and final case. But before we do that, we have to break out of the one we're in, right? and then do our last case which is case four and this is it's pretty basic and so what we're gonna do here is um, if it's been pressed buttons been pressed right oh wait a minute let me gosh I have to do this every time oh wait no let's see these guys boom Boom, 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 boom. Okay, case number four. Um, we want to, first thing we're going to just do is say, which isn't really necessary, but... We already need it's number four. 
button four, which is actually the fifth button. And we're going to tell that trigger, let's see if it sees it, trigger. Um, to equal to false. And then we're going to tell it, tell the, uh, we're going to set a flag, a Boolean flag that says, yeah, it's time to exit. Um, and we're going to call that one do exit. E-X-I-T, do exit equals true. And again, we don't have that in there, so we're going to put that in our Boolean list at the top here, right behind the repeat. Oops. Do exit. And so now, like I've said a few times, anytime you uh, uh, define a Boolean, if you don't initialize it, it defaults to false. And so now our button check, it's going to say true, do it. Now we got to know where do we do this? And um, well, the best place to do it would be within our loop. Our, uh, in our loop, no, let's do it in, let me see, what's the best place to do it in a loop or in button check? Button check. Um, Button check does it, so button, let's do it in the button, 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 right here. Okay, this would be the best place to put it. What we're going to do is we're going to check if, if, um, let's do the milliseconds because we want Milliseconds. We're going to do milliseconds if they're greater than the milliseconds we saved plus 250 and if do exit is true. And then we just want to, and we can, because it's so, so short, we can put it on one line. Exit. And that's basically the same as having it on th three lines, but we're just having it on one line. And so, I think that's going to make it work. Let's save it. Let's do one final test here. Select playlist. Open it. I see something right away that I want to change. And let's just exit that. The exit works. What I want to do is I want to display that exit. And so where would we do that? Let's go up and um, where is that? Let me think. Uh, oh, over here. Uh, 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 this right here. But we also want, we want it to display the, uh, exit button. Always with the errors. Okay, now I think we've got it. Uh, I think it's going to be the way we want it. Let's control S, save it, play it. It's not there. We wanted it to be there. It's not there. Oh, that is an error. So what I want to also do, I'm going to add something um, right up here. Let's see if they can fix it. 
I'm gonna say mouse pressed. And I got it right. Oh, mouse pressed. Now let's see if that error is going to crop up. Nope. Only if we click on that. Okay, now we got to get our exit to show right here, and it is not. Wah. Okay, let's see how we can get that to work. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, this is the error right here. This should be or. Now let's save it, run it, and there's our exit, and it works. Save it, run it. Um, playlist, minute. We're gonna do one last test here next. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, and we're gonna let this play out just to make sure okay it's about to end let's see what it does excellent and so we're gonna do it again one more time and see if it ends correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's put the loopless on, and when it's over, it should loop. Okay, it's coming to the end. We're gonna see if it uh, restarts another list, the same list, loops it. Yes, it is fully functional. All right, that's it. Um, we've saved everything. We've done what we wanted to do. This is now a fully functional player with buttons. It, it, it should work with the touch screen as well. Um, but buttons are kind of where it's at even if you're only using a mouse, it seems to be more user friendly. So the next time, what I want to do, um, it's going to be a short one. But what I want to do is, I, uh, let me just show you real quick here. When we uh, start a song, what I want to do, I'm going to hit that. I want to do so when we click anywhere in this bar here um, that's showing the progression that we can actually play the song from that point whether we go to the beginning or to the end uh, that's it just keeps bugging me looking at it that's the thing I want to do next so I want to thank you all for watching this uh, video tutorial but yeah, if you have any suggestions or you saw any errors that need to be fixed or you're coming uh, uh, finding errors, please, uh, please comment below. Um, and if there's something you'd like to see me try and do again, please comment below. Thank you all for watching. And try to be kind to one another and try to keep smiling. Thank you.